Exploring limitations, a cross-training exercise. It isn't going to be any surprise that in determining where to set limitations, the first thing you could consider doing is clearing out the studio. Inventory what you've got on hand. This may be daunting, but you can cut a deal with yourself to get the process started with these ideas. Part one, explore the options. Vow to fill at least one bag with items you no longer need and give it to a friend, a secondhand store, or offer it online. Vow to do this every week for a month until everything you want to release is gone. Or, organize one area of the studio at a time, whatever that means. Recently, I called my sister and she was furiously emptying out the kitchen junk drawer. She was in a bad mood, but she knew it would lift when the stuff was organized and she did feel better. So will you, just do it. Or, consider incorporating my studio rules. One, something comes in, something goes out. Two, use what's here. Write down your interpretation or write your own version of those rules. Remember, no matter how sensible or good a rule is, if it doesn't fit, it's not your rule. Part two, work with it. Choose from the suggestions below or make up your own project. The first one would be, cut up a piece of art that isn't working or paint out a painting that sucks. Be fearless. How could it get better? Cut up two pieces and put them together. Study the process and then write about it. Don't feel guilty if nothing comes of this and you have to throw it away. Sometimes thinking, figuring, failing, and refiguring are just as good if not better than the finished product. Set limitations before you begin. Maybe color, tools, size, materials. Work small so you can see the piece through to completion and write about it. Or write several sets of game plans featuring a variety of limitations. Put them in a hat. Choose one whenever you need a jump start. Your rebel artist may sneer if you don't like what you drew on any particular day, but at least you'll have something to push against or fast forward to content. What do you care about? Engage your writer artist self and explore a topic using free association and visual imaging. And when you get it worked out, then plan the tools. Artists respond. Purging clutter seems to be a major item in my life right now, wrote Linda Dawson. I am working on both the physical clutter and the emotional clutter. The physical purge is easier since I can clearly see the items that need to be purged. The emotional purge is harder to identify, but what a rewarding experience when my mind bags something and I can see it thrown in the trash. Sometimes I'm tempted to return it to the person who gave it to me, but then I think, be a better person than them and just throw it out. Louise Bateman wrote, the haiku at the <clears throat> beginning of the essay really spoke to me. The limits were liberating. While I define myself as a fiber artist, I think there may be a poet author lurking somewhere inside me because here are some haiku I wrote. Number one, limitations help inspire greater artwork. Less liberates us. Here's another, hug your artist self. Creative doors then open. Art passion is released. And her last. The soul is nourished by artistic endeavors. Art is fulfilling. Sandy Kunkel wrote, the real clincher of this week's assignment was learning firsthand about the power of limitations. I had an assignment to work on a 12 by 12 format for the design group. The size was my first limitation. I've probably never done anything smaller than three feet by three feet. Color and value were according to the assignment, the next limitation, and I added a third. Use only materials I had on hand. I used a piece of ink aid coated gauze that was already printed. I liked it, but I hadn't found a way to integrate it into a larger piece. I played instinctively with the gauze and created a piece that I think had just the right bit of mystery. The power of limitations came to mind again today after I sat in a poorly run meeting that started late and ran 45 minutes over the stated ending time. 
My volunteer work is important, but my time in the studio is more important. Certainly the reaction to this morning would have been the same with or without strength training, but illuminating my situation and my reaction to it with the power of limitations gives me the courage and permission to make a positive decision for myself. Barbara Bushy shared, another aspect of using what you have. I resisted the urge to go out and take more photos of corn stalks poking through the snow because I always have a hundred and I got to work on a study so that I could actually make a quilt. Deborah Franzini wrote, this week using journaling to mine for content was an awesome new idea for me. I'm writing more and it's exciting and scary to see what comes up. This morning in my studio, I took an older completed quilt and I sliced it up. I can't wait to see what it becomes now. Tara Alexander wrote, when I started artist strength training, I promised myself I would do the homework and I've been in the studio every day. I've organized, labeled, hung, filed, and inventoried. Last weekend after dawdling, I realized this was not the kind of studio time Jane was talking about and I was seriously procrastinating and I wrote this haiku. Distracting myself, avoiding art by planning, I am so busted. Bottom line, I'm afraid to make art because I don't want to make bad art. Organizing let me hide behind the noble pretense of working. I needed to stop and just get on to the work. Hand painting has always been my favorite technique and I rediscovered the meditative feeling I get when I paint on textiles. So I'm trying to be gentle with myself. Here's another haiku. Fearing art mistakes, I let the process unfold. No ugly babies. Tara Alexander. Lori Paolini wrote, after spending last week crippled with self-doubt, this lesson was just what I needed. I'm not fond of the term aha moment, but that's exactly what it was. I started to work immediately setting limits. I would use some gelatin print backgrounds I was afraid to touch for fear of ruining photos I've been taking of birds at the feeder. I would monoprint and gelatin print and only use the materials I had on hand. Real life called and only tonight did I get back to the project. Because what I was working on was so specific, I knew immediately what to do to get started again. Getting back into it was easy. This could have turned into another abandoned effort. By setting the parameters up front, I was free to work on the art itself and not the things I used to create it. Conclusion. I would like to close this chapter with this thought for your consideration. Be mindful of collecting quotes that are inspirational but not instructive. I benefit more from substance. I need a direct assignment, something real to work with. Some inspirational phrases sound great, but they don't tell us very much. For example, somebody shared this with me. If you treat problems as possibilities, life will start to dance with you in the most amazing ways. Hmm. I suppose it's inspiring, but what does it mean? How do you turn that concept into a practical application so that you can use the real time idea in your real, very limited studio space? One angle might be to analyze a phrase like that sentence by sentence, which allows you to pick it apart and figure out what it really means. See where your thoughts go. Writing about that quote led me to this translation. If I treat problems as possibilities, I won't quit working just because I am discouraged. I'll keep going and I'll feel good about not stopping. I might actually even have a breakthrough. It could come from working or maybe it could be serendipity. Either way, I'll be floating on air, pumped with ideas when I leave the studio at the end of the session. Life will feel good and amazing and I'll feel like dancing. We should all feel like dancing occasionally. <laughs>